Let's talk about what took place last weekend. You know, this is another thing that you and I have been following for, for uh, you know, uh, over a decade, more. Um, and that is the CPAC. And it went from, well, I want to say it went from like the lunatic fringe, but it's uh, it didn't went from, it's always just been the <laughs> lunatic fringe. But we should also say, it's always been the central heart of the Republican Party. I mean, I remember when CPAC people were showing up in 2005, you know, complaining that George uh, W. Bush was not conservative enough for them. Mm -hmm. um, and and what everything you find at that place is like a preview for where the Republican Party is going. That's absolutely true. I mean, it's been, just as you say, I mean, I remember... I've been following CPAC for as long as you have. I mean, we've been watching this thing every year. They're, they'd all get together. And yes, it was. I mean, they'd have people, they'd have all the, all the Republican dignitaries would show up and give speeches. I mean, it wasn't like they, you know, boycotted it or anything no. because it was too loony. They were in there just, they were searching for votes and support and money and everything else. But this was the beating heart of the Republican Party as reflected in the Republican media. To me, looking back in the 90s when I was looking at CPAC, it was talk radio all the way. I mean, this was Rush right. Limbaugh's, you know, these were Rush Limbaugh's people. And today it's a little more widespread. There's QAnon now, you know, but nonetheless, it's, it's always been that. And they were always selling a bunch of junk. You know, the grift was always obvious at CPAC. They had this whole hall down there where they're selling stuff like, you know, happiness is Hillary's face on a milk carton. You know, that was their, <laughs> and that's their idea of humor, you know, at the, at CPAC. And that they were selling, you know, like Aunt Jemima, you know, pancake mix or waffle mix with Barack Obama's face. I mean, it was really, they're gross. They're just gross people. And everything about it was always gross. And they had Ann Coulter there and she would say stuff about, she would make racial, you know, use racial epithets and talk about shooting Bill Clinton. Clinton and they'd all scream wildly, yeah, you know. So tell me that Donald Trump was a surprise, right? No. I mean, this stuff was brewing and that it was the beating heart of the Republican Party long before Donald Trump actually jumped. He piggybacked on what was already going on. Totally. totally. So now, and he's been a big star at CPAC ever since 2015. This year was very interesting because there were two things happening. The first is, is that Somehow, you know, this is the this this rift. I wouldn't even call it I wouldn't call it a schism or a break, but there's a rift in the Republican Party um, that has to do with the establishment and Donald Trump, the same one that's sort of been there since 2016. They think they have an opening this time, maybe to sort of separate him and maybe find a way around him, although it's delusional because they cannot <laughs> find a way around him. Um, he is a he's an immovable force in the in the Republican Party. Um, but the the CPAC had this um, you know, it was his it was his CPAC. Ron DeSantis didn't go. He went to the Club for Growth donor meeting, which says something. Mike Pence did, too. Mm -hmm. You had Nikki Haley and Mike Pompeo. They went to both. They went to CPAC and they went to the donor meeting. So, you know, there's your straddle for you, right? The, um, <laughs> the VP crew. That's a, The that's VP what I crew. Think. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, you know, what you could see there was was this rift. And, the, and, this, and CPAC this year, as compared to previous years, uh, was kind of a desultory, dull affair. Not that they weren't gross, because they are always gross. That's just who they are. But it was kind of, it was, you know, as Donald Trump would say, low energy, right? I mean, it was just even his speech, which he, you know, he made one very important comment that will be remembered historically. He said, you know, I am your voice. I am your justice. I am your retribution. You know, I mean, I guess, you know, vengeance is mine, saith Donald Trump. You know, that that was his his message to the crowd. Um, but even that crowd, you know, the room wasn't full at CPAC yeah. and well, people were leaving. Digby, yeah, I mean, I I am really interested in DeSantis's uh, kind of strategy here, right? Which is to to shy away from uh, the CPAC crowd. It reminds me also of what he was doing when Trump was in East Palestine. He was doing his crime tour, going to Philly, to New York, and to Chicago, and speaking at speaking to police unions, mm -hmm. and like. Who are we speaking to here? 
right? I mean, are you trying to get votes or are you trying to kind of shore up support from a general infrastructure of conservatives? That is a terrible strategy, in my view. And, sh- and, and, and is the contrast between the two and their political understanding becomes uh, more obvious by the day. And, and that point that you made, it just paired with what he was doing in the weeks pre- uh, mm-hmm. prior to this. I, I mean, he's he, he's bad at this, I think. <laughs> I think you're right. I am really. And here's here's a couple of more data points to support what you just said. Um, DeSantis, you know, they did came out with some polling just I think it was yesterday that showed that they were polling in Florida. His, you know, his woke campaign, you know, woke Florida is where woke goes to die. Woke, woke, woke. Right? He's every other word he says is woke is not popular in Florida. Floridians, the people who voted for him, are not into that. Now, I think that DeSantis has made a bet. I think he thinks that by doing all this woke, woke, woke stuff, that he's going to be able to grab that that Trump MAGA crowd, that they're going to say, you know, okay, you know, fine. But, I mean, that's assuming that Trump's not going to say anything about him going and sucking up to the to, to the to the Paul Ryan, you know, uh, Carl Rove. And in fact, he's already doing this on Truth Social. Trump is already saying that, you know, that DeSantis is part of the Jeb Bush crowd. I mean, I don't know how much Trump paid Jeb Bush to come out and endorse Ron DeSantis. I was, yeah, you know, that's about my <laughs> first reaction was like... How, how do, is 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 Jeb Bush really that hostile to uh, Ron DeSantis that he wants to completely? Why would sink he do that his... to him? <laughs> well, My I God. think that they're trying to make Ron DeSantis be a moderate to the general Republican to win yes. back a suburban Without voter a doubt. type. Of I mean, course. that's why Nikki Haley will be he's the his, compromise his VP. candidate. But, yeah. but the compromise it's insane candidate. because he's a fascist, and <laughs> just because he went to freaking Yale doesn't make him a moderate that's going to be accepted. I mean, the the Republican uh, donors will have to accept him, I guess. But once he crosses that Rubicon, once he's in with those guys, they're going to have different uh, benchmarks for him to to hit. Right. He has to appeal to them at a certain point. And then he's even further away from the base that he's trying to covet because that they're going to try to get him to play ball with the club for growth crowd. So that's uh, like he is making a deal with the devil that's never going to get him elected, in my opinion. No, it, what, and I'm not even sure it can get him the nomination. Right. Here's a little thing that has happened in the last week or so. You remember Ken Cuccinelli, right? The Cooch, they used to call him. He was the lieutenant governor of Virginia, and he was Trump's DHS chief or acting head of, of DHS. He's been sort of on, I don't know why he's considered some big deal, I guess, in the establishment and why, I don't know. It's kind of just tells you something about the establishment. Um, But they, so everybody's been wondering, is he going to back Trump, right? Because he was in the Trump administration. Maybe he would. Well, apparently yesterday he came out and he's, he's going to be in charge of a draft DeSantis movement, Mm. which is very interesting because Cuccinelli has been spending the last few months going out to Republican officials in the states and talking to them about potentially changing the rules of the delegate of how they how they count delegates. The Republican Party has a very diff, is very different than the Democrats because they have a winner take all system in most states, which gives Trump a real boost if he is if there's a crowded field. Right. We've all talked about this because Trump has a solid base of support. We figure it's probably about 30 percent of the Republican Party that loves him and will vote for him no matter what, which if there's more than a few people in the in the race, that that means that he can win with a plurality. Uh, he wins the state. He wins that, you know, he gets all the even if Meatball Ron gets 22 percent and I get 30, <laughs> I get 100 percent of the delegates. I get 100 percent. And then Meatball Ron He's a couple of uh, he's a couple of pieces of pasta short uh, because he doesn't you can't add up the twenty percent here and the twenty percent there and then he wins one one place <laughs> or tiny D as I like to call it <laughs> tiny <laughs> delegates tiny, tiny delegates. delegates that's what we're talking about tiny delegate so- count. Cuccinelli's been running around trying to change that system and turn it more into the way the Democrats do it, which is that it's proportional, which they're thinking then it's a it, it can be a cage match, right? In in the at the end of the day between Ron, between Tiny D, Meatball Ron, <laughs> and 
Trump and and they can and, and he can actually eke out a victory, even if it's, you know, even if there's a bunch of other people in the field. So they're doing all this kind of stuff. Right. I mean, there's the establishment kind of going ahead. Now, here's the, the, the rub. Most of these Republican <laughs> these Republican parties in the states, they're Trumpers. I mean, look what just happened to Michigan. Right. Michigan's got QAnon people running the Republican Party. I mean, right. it is completely a mess. And that is true across the board. These The people who, who Trump has inspired over the past six, seven years, they've all, they're engaged. They're, yep. they're playing in Republican politics now. So I don't think that's going to work. Let's just say, as looking at this, and CPAC, CPAC really convinced me of this, this Republican um, primary is going to be super, super interesting. I mean, dangerous as hell, because whether it's DeSantis or Trump, you know, who knows what could happen? We, You know, it's a nightmare scenario uh, for either way. Um, but, uh, you know, th this is something we haven't haven't seen before. We're going to watch this thing unfold. I'm still betting on Trump winning. I mean, I just think it's too many people who really like him in the party still. I mean, people underestimate this. They think it has something that it's some kind of, you know, abstract thing. A lot of Republicans, and not just his hardcore base, by the way, I mean, they worship him. There's a whole bunch of other ones who think Trump's pretty good. You know, he was pretty good. I mean, you know, yeah, he's a little bit of a loud mouth. I don't like the tweets, but, you know, he's, he was a good president. Really liked him. I mean, I don't know what, why they're that insane to actually think that, but they do. And, um, and yet you've got this battle going on with the Trumpers in the House now doing all this weaponization stuff. I mean, they're crazy. They're completely, you know, out of their minds. Um, and you've got, you know, you've got moderates or the senators, you know, Mitch McConnell and his people kind of going, hey, you know, kind of, can you guys cool it? Because it's getting a little weird. Tucker Carlson out there bringing January 6th up again and Kevin McCarthy helping him. That was a, that, another thing. Who paid Kevin McCarthy to give the, the, the um, footage to Tucker Carlson? That's not helping. I mean, that, they don't want to talk about January 6th anymore because that's not a really popular thing, even among, you know, they want the suburban moms that that have defected to the Democrats since 2018 to come back. Talking about January 6th isn't going to help. So this mm -hmm. is an extremely fascinating dynamic. And it's absolutely true that this, the, you know, this Ron DeSantis, Donald Trump battle is really a battle for the future of the Republican Party. And I got to say, at this point, I'm still betting on Trump. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I, I, I agree. I, I mean, I, I would I, I would make that same bet. I do think. The thing to really watch for is this uh, delegate thing, because that is yep. the secret weapon that Trump has, because yep. he, unless they coalesce around Ron DeSantis before the first primary, um, which I think is, is unlikely, then it, it becomes that dynamic where it's winner take all and the 30 percent that trump is sort of locked in on and maybe the 35 or 38 percent that he can expect in most of these places is going to be enough for him to get 100 percent of the delegates yeah. mm. but here's the other thing if they change it trump is going to attack them and say this is, this is uh, this is rigged right they rigged it just like they rigged it with bernie sanders <laughs> and i'm not yeah. going to I'm not going to um, uh, I'm not going to engage in this. And right. so um, that is the uh, that is well, that's you know. his real secret weapon. Right. I mean, he has this 30 percent and he can do with it what he wants. Everybody knows. I mean, he is not going to graciously concede. We know that much. I think that it's safe to say Donald Trump is not going to graciously concede no matter if he loses by whatever means. Right. He's not going to do that. Is he going to endorse the thing? Does he care about the Republican Party? Of course not. He has out there, and he even mentioned it the other day in some sort of vague thing, I can't remember specifically what it was, about a third party run. Well, man, man, you know, maybe that's on the menu if certain things happen. They asked him if he would endorse, if he would agree before the debates, like the RNC is saying they're going to demand. They have to agree to, to support the, the eventual candidate. He's like, well, I don't know. It depends on who the candidate is. <laughs> hey, this is not... I'll agree if it's fair. If it's fair. <laughs> I need it to be fair. And everyone wants it to be fair. And if it's fair... <laughs> Then I'll agree, but if it's not fair, then I won't agree. And but if he's I'll not agree a good, if it's fair, 
if he's not at the debates, he skipped a debate before and he still won that that nomination in 2016. Exactly. And he knows that. And he knows that his, I mean, this is what he has. He has no 30. One. Boring, <laughs> boring. Low like ratings. Pompeo, yeah, low ratings. And Nikki Haley yeah. and Ron Little D. I mean, give me a break. Tiny D. Uh, Tiny D. Tiny D. Tiny D. Tiny D. Tiny, D. Tiny, Tiny Meatball. D. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, this is what he has. This is this is the secret weapon that he has in his hand is that he they know that he will say this, this it was rigged and he will convince his people not to vote for the for this guy maybe in the general i mean that of course you know i we have no doubt that he would he would take it all the way to the end i mean donald trump's you know his whole personality his psyche is is in crisis over the fact that he lost that election it, it's not going in 2020 he is not going to be able to do it in in 2024 and they know this they just you know really i read some article i can't remember what it was I, it was in politico i think that said, a lot of them are just hoping he, you know, drops dead on the golf course. Right, That's exactly. really their plan. Well, he's old, you know, <laughs> so could, you happen. Know, could, could happen. Let's, you know, fingers crossed. I mean, that's really the plan, because if he doesn't drop dead on the golf course, he is still playing. And as long as he's playing, he has this group of people who are devoted to him and he will not concede. And I don't know what you do with that other than, you know. You, nothing. He, he likes, like I said, he's an immovable object. They cannot get around this guy. They can't. They can't do it. I, Don DeSantis can try all he wants, but it's not going to make any difference because the people who follow Trump and it's a it's a large group of people in the Republican Party. It is a very very important you know plurality in the in the in the Republican Party, and they're not going. I don't you know they're not going to go. Okay, well we love you, Don, but you know love you, Trumpy, but we're moving to Ron. It's not yeah. going to happen. I, I think I think you're right about that, and uh, uh, it, it will definitely be. Um, interesting to see, and I think that delegate thing is is yeah. really is really the key. And yep. I, you know, I frankly, I still am surprised. I I should rephrase that. I would not be surprised if DeSantis decided not to run this 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 go round. It'd be the smart move, I think. I, I never. They always say the presidential candidates, look, you know, your time, it happens. You, you've got a window that's open and you got to go through it, you know, now, whatever. But to me, the smart move for DeSantis would have been to wait this one out because there was just no doubt that Trump was going to make a mess of it no matter what. No matter what was happening, this was just, you know, unless he did drop dead on the golf course. This is, you know, this was going to be a big, messy, horrible thing. And the party itself, just forget Trump even. The whole party is a mess. I mean, look at this House, you know, majority. They're completely out of their minds. And and they, they, they're they controlled by this crazy group of people. DeSantis, if he really wanted to be a president, you know, of, you know, distinction, should have said, you know, look, I got to. Got to keep my eyes on Florida. This is my state. I just won. I just, you know, this is not my, this is not the right time for me and, and not do it. And it is possible that he could, he could, he could decide not to at the end of the day. Look at what happened to Scott Walker last time, right? Yep. I mean, he ran and then, you know, dropped out before the, I think after the very first debates. 